Okay, so first of all, hello. And second, thank you to all the guys, everybody that has subscribed lately. I really appreciate it. I've kind of been in the lull of production lately. I've got my four-year-old home, uh, and it just makes it difficult to sit down and devote time to this. Uh, so bear with me. I'm sure he'll barge in and make some noise, but I figured I've got to get back at doing this. This uh, project, I started off recording with video, and I was set up everything in a different location and tried to do this with my camera, and it ultimately just looked awful. Shaky camera, focus problems, you know, when I went to edit it, it just looked really bad. So I decided, hey, I've already made a couple of these elements in the 3D program. Might as well just, you know, make the processor and the floor pedal complete it, and I can use it for other things anyway. I can very clearly show how to do this and why it works and how it works for me. Maybe this video can help you understand and, and utilize this setup. I think it is just hard to beat, at least on this kind of budget. I'm sure there are better solutions and bigger dollars to spend doing it. But for me, I've used this setup for coming up on, I want to say, eight years. And I'm the kind of person, obviously, if you follow my channel, I move through a lot of equipment because I've just, you know, I don't like a lot of it. And everybody told me when I showed up with this, oh, I wonder how long you're going to have this, a week? And eight years later, I'm still using it and I'm, you know, loving it. I'm going to play the animation and then I'm going to go into DaVinci and explain it step by step how this all works for me and maybe for you. So here we go. And as you can see, I cut some corners. <laughs> you know, I might be able to do it in this soft. Yeah, I can do it here. I don't need to go into DaVinci. All right, so, uh, well, it's not quite as efficient. Let me go into DaVinci. Let's see if we can make this any. Can't make it any better. All right, so you might have to zoom in, watch it on a big screen. First off, here's the pedal board. Now, when you buy, if you buy this unit, the brain, which is this part, the silver rack piece is mounted underneath with all the jacks facing outward. And it has a very short ethernet cable that connects it to the, the pedal. So it comes as basically one unit like a helix would. But those clever guys at TC Electronics thought, hey, let's separate these two parts, make this rack mountable, get a long ethernet cable with these connectors that resemble uh, Micro uh, XLR cables. Typical Cat5 connections are not durable. They're not meant to be unplugged and plugged, you know, day in and day out for gigging and withstand being tripped and ganked on. So these connections are really nice. I mean, unfortunately, that cable is extra. It doesn't come with it, so you have to order that separate. But it's worth it because it's um, very high quality and it's lasted me so far eight years. No problems. So uh, the way I run it, is I've separated out. I have a rack that sits next to my amp and it has the brain, which is this on top. Let's make this bigger so I can see the whole time. Ooh, whole timeline. I have this in a rack along with a power conditioner, my wireless unit, a couple pedals. And as you'll see, it has on the back, it has loops. And you can put up to four pedals or any kind of effects processor in these loops. This fifth one, which you can see says insert is specifically designed to run to an amplifier. So its impedance is designed to simulate a guitar plug in, plugged into an amplifier so that you know all the impedances are correct. And that's kind of 
a little beyond my pay grade. I understand it a little bit, but that's kind of beside the point. It's just designed to be used this way. You can use these the same way, but you'll get a slightly different result. You can run into like some weird squeals and feedbacks using these for amps. So they've figured it out. They have designed it that way. And so what I do is go from your guitar, green cable, into the input of this. Now, the purpose for this is you have filter, which is your auto waz, your touch waz, and your regular wah wah that go in. Uh, the filter and the compressor go in front of the amp. So you want your signal to pass through those just as if they were outboard gear, outboard, you know, a wah wah pedal and a compressor. Because traditionally you would not put that in the loop of an amp. You'd run from your guitar to a a compressor pedal or a wah-wah and then maybe into other pedals and then into your amp. But the conventional wisdom is those things sound better in front of the amp. And specifically with, you know, actually with both pedals, some wah-wah pedals have a gain boost and that gain boost drives the front of your amp harder, distorts more. And uh, so, pardon that interruption, I'll probably edit that out. So your signal comes into this unit and passes through these effects, providing that you're using them. If not, they're bypassed. Then it goes through this DA converter, or I should say, initially it goes into an AD, or a DA converter, digital, no, AD, analog to digital, runs through these effects if you're using them, and then is converted to analog again, and is run through these loops, if there's anything in the loops. Now, what's kind of cool is these are always sending a signal. I think the way it's designed is that the return is either engaged or not engaged. But so you could technically run, use one of these to run to a separate amplifier, but you'd still only be getting the signal that's coming off your guitar, none of uh, the, what the amp has to offer. So if you were running two amps, you could um, run a signal out of any one of these four to that separate amp. Granted, that second amp would not uh, benefit from any of the post processing that happens in here but it's a way to split your signal into two amps. Uh, so with this setup, you will run into the front, get this processing if you want it, and those, you know, those are, let me show you over here real quick. That's these two pedals. So that's filter and that's compressor. And I didn't model a expression pedal to control. I have a, a Ernie Ball expression pedal to control the wah-wah. Uh, and that, the, the benefit of that is a, it's one less pedal or one less powered pedal I have to bring along. It plugs directly into this pedal board underneath and this pedal board has one single cable that goes from wherever I set it down on the stage back to the amp and that's all that I have on the stage because I'm using a wireless and the wireless is in the rack and it's a very short cable from the output of the wireless to the input on the TC electronics unit. So my essentially it would be like putting a wireless receiver here and running a very short cable here. So all my cables are very short. I don't have a cable in my system that's longer than four feet. And that helps with the impedance. Because the longer the cable, the higher the impedance, the more degraded, degraded your signal is. That's why they have uh, buffers, you know, for guitarists that use pedal boards. You buffer the signal, on, usually on the output, if you're driving a long cable, to restore that impedance. So when it hits the amp, you're not losing any of your frequencies, or you lose less. And correct me if I'm wrong on that, that's just how I've come to understand it. I'm no expert on using pedals. So we come into the amp, are into the TC Electronics, capture these effects if you're using them, and leave through the send of the insert. This, so you can see it better. Oh, I guess I don't have it open. Here. Try to get a higher res. Yeah, it won't play. Yep, never mind. That's just not going to cooperate. So you send it that signal out, this is the yellow cable, and into the front of the amp. Now this is where obviously your guitar would normally come in and you capture your preamp or you you are feeding your preamp with that signal. And it's kind of hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around this initially that your amp is basically two parts. It's preamp and power amp. And the division usually happens at the effects loop. You know, if you don't have an effects loop, the you know the division I think is the phase inverter. Again, this is some stuff that I could probably brush up on and and be corrected on, but this is how I understand it. 
So there's a break in your signal chain at the effects loop. So when the guitar, when you play your guitar and you set up your EQ, your gain, structure, and all that, and you get the tone you want, that signal is then broken and sent out the effects loop. Now the effects loop, I believe, drops the impedance down again to mimic what it would be like going into a guitar pedal from a guitar, low impedance signal. That signal is then brought back to the return of your processor. So now you have returning here just your preamp sound. And it's not it's not a loud sound and it's actually if you hooked headphones up to it or put that signal right into a, a workstation, it would sound like a buzz saw. Sound like a distortion pedal, you know, with headphones. Just terrible. Relatively terrible. So now this unit converts that back into digital and runs it through all the remaining effects. You have modulation, pitch, delay, and reverb. Modulation can be anything, phasers, flangers, chorus, tremolo, anything of that nature. Pitch, obviously, pitch benders, pitch shifters. Uh, some of these can actually sound like chorus, like a slight detune. Uh, and the cool thing is that this whole thing can run in stereo, so you can pitch left speaker slightly down, right speaker slightly up, and it has this really cool wide stereo sound. Delays, reverbs. Just to recap, your, uh, your filters, wah-wahs, and compressors go in front of the amp, and that's why they've kind of separated it on this uh, setup, is so to help keep those two isolated and help you remember that these go in front, these go in back. So now that you've got that sound processed, you go through another conversion, from another digital to analog, send it out, comes up in, gets filtered, processed, and now it comes out of the output and back into the return where your power amp takes over and then you're done. Now this is not all that revolutionary, but what the real benefit of this is, is the reliability, the simplicity of setup, the expandability that if you have pedals that you love to use, you can incorporate them, you can leave them in a rack, you know, like they do. They put set up little drawers and the pedals are always in a rack so they're not getting abused day in and day out. Or you can leave this whole unit connected to the floorboard and have a you know pedal board that holds your pedals here and the short little cables run to the loops. And the benefit of that is that if you're not using that specific pedal, it's not in the signal chain taking away your signal because every pedal has a slight impact on your tone whether it's in use or not even if it's true bypass it still takes you know every mechanical connection in your signal path takes a little bit away from your signal uh, and it's you know it's, it's a compounding effect so the more pedals you have the more your signal is degraded so anyway um, another really beneficial thing about this setup is its gate system the way I understand it is that it takes your input signal which is traditionally is very clean, very s small, has a very low noise floor, and it uses that to control the gate on the output side. So it's basically using the low signal, noise to signal ratio of your guitar, uses the input to control the output of the gate. That's the best way to say it. Uh, because you know you have to, if you use a noise gate in the pedal format, you have to choose where to put it. Am I going to put it in front so that it doesn't pick up all the noise coming off my guitar and still allows all the pedals that come behind it to bleed their noise through the system? I mean, that's fine in a, uh, in a band situation because the ambient volume of a show, you, you probably won't hear a whole lot of all those pedals hissing and whatnot, but say you're recording, this makes your output dead silent. So... That's one of the benefits of this gate, or the system's gate, and that I have. The, the beauty of this product is, is you can re reprogram any of these buttons to do anything you want. And so in my setup, I have a gate assigned to this button. And it's, you know, if you could see it, if I had shown it the right way, maybe at the end you can see it. Not really. All right. Uh, it says loop one, two, three. Though that's default to control when you buy the unit, these three buttons control those first loops on and off, which is kind of strange because you know there's one more loop that you don't defaultly have control over. But 
I reassigned my first loop to be my gate. And I usually, I don't know why I've done that because I, I don't really turn it on and off, but I thought I might have a need to do that in the beginning and I've ne just never changed it because I don't use a gate on my clean channel and I don't use a gate on my low gain. Uh, I just use it on the higher gains. And the again, the, the beauty of this setup is that you can, the gate is not just, it's each one of these effects can be individualized per preset. So I can, you know, uh, on my medium gain, I can set the gate just enough to that it controls it. The higher gain, I have to bump it up a little bit more, and so on, so that you know the the potential for the interaction between the speaker and the guitar is obviously greater every time I mean, with each step of gain increase that you add to the setup, and uh, you know basically not to contradict what I was saying before that you know the input controls the output and it shouldn't matter. The thing is, is that if you once the gate is open and it's you know, you're in, you have interaction between your speakers and your guitar, you have to uh, set the gain more harshly in order to close that gate. But if I take the same low, relatively low setting for, say, my mid gain and use it on my high gain, if I turn my volume down on the guitar, the result is the same. But once I open up that volume and make the slightest sound, you know, that gain setting for the low gain will not the the gate setup will not work, so I have to you know bump it up as I bump up my distortion. Um, the other thing is is that uh, you can use these these pedals or any of them to control those loops, so you can have instant access. Now you don't have to do it that way. Uh, I do have it that way for I have an SD one in my loop one position, so uh, depending on what amp I'm using. Uh, I can add that in and out as I please and save it to a preset. The other thing is it's got a built-in tuner and when you engage the tuner it silences the whole rig so that's a, also an easy way to change guitars uh, and it's got tap tempo so that you can time align your delays and, and tremolos anything that has is a time-based effect you can sync it up to your the music you're playing. One other real important thing that is kind of confusing. This last button is the boost, and the boost is just strictly volume, post volume. So it makes the you know overall uh, amp louder or quieter, and it's not a boost by a literal term. What the system does is it attenuates your overall sound. So uh, if you were to run a cable from the send to the return, the the volume would be exactly the same as if this was not engaged and you didn't have that cable there. But when you hook this up and run it for the first time, you'll notice that it's considerably quieter. Uh, and that's because the unit is attenuating the signal and bringing the volume down, and that is your, your rhythm volume. Once you hit the boost button, it brings the the gain to unity so now you are uh, at the volume you would be at if you were not using anything in the loop so it doesn't make the signal louder than it would be uh, and the only reason I mentioned that is that it's kind of a, a shock at the when you first hook it up that uh, it's your whole setup is quieter and you have to use more volume output on the amp to to match where it was before you set up the unit or before you included the unit in your setup. So that is a deceptive feature, I guess. Maybe that's not the right way of putting it, but just so you know that if you do use one of these things, when this is off, your signal is attenuated down. Uh, and that's, you can mitigate that and you can kind of control by how much because the internals of this have to be able to adapt to multitude of different uh, effects units. So, or amplifiers, because not every amplifier behaves the same way. Not every uh, loop sends out a uh, an attenuated or a, a a you know the kind of signal that it just has to be able to accommodate high and low signals. So you can control that internally in the uh, processor to so that you get the least amount of of overall volume loss when you use this. I mean, it's not really a problem. Uh, because, you know, 
you can always just turn up the volume on the amp to recover what you lose by hooking it up. And it's, it's a difference of like between one and, and maybe almost two on the volume knob. So it's, it's really doesn't, um, it's not a problem in the, in the big picture. It's just something to note that when you use it, you will notice that your, your overall uh, volume is less than not using it until you hit that boost button. Uh, and just a side note, the pedal on the bottom side has two expression pedal jacks, and so does the brain, which theoretically you could use four expression pedals. So the way the manual describes it is you could have four wah-wahs throughout your stage, and each one of them could be connected to one of these jacks and control your wah -wah. So kind of like how Metallica would run around to one side of the stage and Kirk Hammock would have a wah-wah pedal over there and one on the other side, and, and uh, that's just the benefit of that. Or each one can control something different in the amp or in the processor. You can control anything that's got an adjustment can be controlled with an expression pedal. And that's kind of cool. I've, I've never really found it useful for my, my needs. Uh, I've tried it. I've made it to where the delay is short or long or loud or soft or the, the trails are uh, shorter or longer. Just, you know, you can do anything you want with the expression pedals. I just use it for a, a wah-wah and, and occasionally I'll use it for a pitch bender. And again, each preset can be set differently or it can be global for how the expression pedal behaves. I can set up this rig, my rig, in about five minutes. I did it when I recorded the video of the physical setup. I you know timed it and it was just shy of five minutes. And, and I think that's that's pretty good, especially when you're dealing with playing shows with other bands and you have to share the stage and you have to get on or off quickly. This has been such a time saver. I'm always the first one who's done it. My bass player who has like a pedal, a tuner, I finished before him and no disrespect to him, but uh, it's just, this is so easy because in my rack, all these cables are zip tied together. I unroll them, unzip time, unroll them and bam, one, two, three is all I have to do because they're all already connected on this side in the rack, so I don't have to connect that side. I only have to connect three cables, and they're all the same length, and I'm ready to go. And then I obviously have to connect the pedal board and its cables. So four total cables. That's really it. I mean, this, not to mention this unit has great effects. I mean, it's not real, and you know, there's better effects by far. And even TC Electronics makes better effects individually. But you're always kind of sacrificing a little bit when you buy a unit that combines all these into one box. Buy them individually, they're obviously more specialized, they're uh, devoted to that one effect in that box. But I've never had any complaints. I think the I can get a great Phase 90 sound, great delays, great reverbs, uh, and the reverbs are okay. But, you know, in a, again, in a live context, quality of your effects is so <laughs> irrelevant because you have you're competing with all the other instruments and nobody can tell if you're using a cheap really cheap anything i mean that that's the thing all this is kind of academic this is all kind of like oh look at what i've got this is you know cool my biggest reason for using this is the ease factor it's just easy beyond you know having my presets so all i have to do is tap one button to change all the different things that i want to happen and you know, say a, going from a clean to a lead. You know, my clean setup is over here. My lead is over here. This is my high gain. This is my medium gain and my low gain. And then I can tap any of these on and off as I desire for a song. Or I can have them programmed for any of these presets. And then you've got banks up and down like any other processor. It's just easier because, A, it doesn't break. I, you know... I can't tell you how many shows I've been in or watched where the guitar player is scrambling because something is just not working on his pedal board. He's unplugging cables, he's rerouting, he's taking things out of the chain, and he's missing songs. Or the setup is taking extra long because he can't get his signal, can't get anything to work. That has honestly only been a problem one time in eight years since I had this. I don't know what happened. It just, there was no output signal, so I reset it and it came back. So that's the one time it has let me down. 
And it's funny, if you go watch the uh, promotional videos for this product, the early ones, they drove a, well, first they put it out in a parking lot. They took the brain out and just had the pedal board on the ground and they had it connected up, working, playing. And so they went and stomped on it and it worked. So then they brought out a lawnmower, like a riding lawnmower and drove over it. They brought out a truck and they drove over it with a truck. Got picked up the guitar, started playing it, kept working. They brought a freaking tank and drove over it. And the thing was shaped like a banana at the end of it. And it still worked. I don't know if the the functionality of the buttons worked beyond that, but because the brain was separated, you know, obviously you couldn't drive over this with a tank and expect it to work, but that's kind of the beauty. This thing can take beating. Every one of these things has got a rubber seal to prevent, you know, a spill on it from screwing it up. It's just, it's basically bulletproof. I, you know, like I've said, I've had it eight years with no problems other than uh, that one time when it just had some kind of glitch and I reset it. And I didn't even, the, the, the cool thing was is I didn't lose my settings. I was terrified that if I did it, that I was just going to have to start from scratch. And I did not. And that was pretty cool. Anyway, I hope this you find this useful. Sorry it took me so long to get it out. Um, I'll play it one more time just because I'm pretty proud of it. And uh, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, if I left out any... Oh, there's one other thing I do want to add. It also has power supply. Four power supplies, four pedals. Ends, you can power it from right here, not have to have four power supplies in your rack powering each pedal that you run through here. And it's got, you know, switching, uh, the foot switch jacks here. I'm sorry, the, the expression pedal jacks over here and then these outputs this is what I forgot to include in this animation is I would normally have a cable coming out of here going to the back of the amp to change the channels so it can channel switch your amp as long as your amp has a uh, quarter inch now if your amp is MIDI you can do it that way and I, I did that with the Marshall DSL 40 and that worked beautifully. So this is my unpaid promotion for this product. I love it. I've turned several people onto it. Both the guitar player and me in the band that I'm in use it. Uh, or both the guitar player and I, I use it. Yeah, sorry. My mom would grammar correct me on that. And we have, he, you know, he's, he's the one that actually said, I, I bet you won't keep it very long. And then after I did, and he saw how useful it was, he bought himself one and we both have not looked back since. So... That's not entirely true. I've tried to find other things just because it's my nature to see if there's something better. Uh, but this thing just works for what I do perfectly. Uh, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope uh, you find this useful. And maybe, uh, maybe TC Electronics will reach out to me and say, hey, this is pretty cool. Can we sponsor you? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I'll just play it one more time on the way out. And then I'll see you in the next video.